Hello, I'm Bo Carnes, and I'm about to show you how to create a serverless API using MongoDB Realm, and then I'm gonna show you how to test it with Postman. I'll show you how to create just a couple endpoints, but then you'll know enough to create even more on your own. Okay, we need to create a, an account on MongoDB Atlas. I'll just go to get started now. Now, you'll be creating a new account. I already have an account, so I'm going to sign in. Now, during the account creation process, you may be directed to create a project. That's what we want. But since I already have an account, I'm going to have to go to New Project here. And now, there, this should be kind of similar to what you see during the, the account creation process. So I'm going to call this Movie Database. And then go to Next. And then I'm just going to create the project. And then build a database. And then I'm going to make sure to go to the free tier. And I'm just going to keep all these on the default settings. You may want to, you could change your cloud provider or change where it is in the world, depending on where you live in the world. So it's closer. And it, all the we can, we can change the settings to pay more money but for this example we're just going to choose the free tier and I'll do create cluster and it takes a few minutes to provision which we'll just skip past really quick in this video okay the database is set up so we're going to load some sample data we're going to go to load sample data set and load sample data set that's one thing cool about MongoDB Realm is that the sample data makes it really easy to try things out and to test things out. So for this quick 15 minute course, we're gonna be using the sample data. Okay, we got the sample data loaded. Let's just check it out for a little bit. I'm gonna click Browse Collections. And there's a bunch of sample data set. We're specifically going to be using the Inflix. And this has a collection called Movies. This is the one we're going to be working with for this tutorial. And this has a lot of different movies. Like for instance, this one's called Blacksmith Scene. And it has the plot, three men hammer on an anvil and pass a bottle of beer around. And so all of them are gonna have all this um, information about each movie, including when it was released, um, we have the year. So let's now go over to the Realm tab. Okay, I'm gonna name this Movies. And then it's going to link the database. This is the database we just created. It just had the default name of Cluster Zero. So we wanna keep that one. And then create Realm application. And we don't need any of these guides because I am the guide. Okay, I zoomed in a little bit so you can see better. Now Realm has tons of features. We're just going to focus on exposing data through third-party services, which is at the heart of creating a Realm backend service. So I'm going to click on third-party services and then click on add service. And we're just going to use, uh, do a basic HTTP service. This is how we create an API. I'm going to call this movies and then add service. Let's X out of this. And then I'm going to click add incoming webhook. And then I'm going to call this Movies. And then we're going to leave most of this at the default, but I'm going to change this to a Git request because this, this is going to be the API endpoint to get a list of movies. Now you can set up authentication, so not just anybody can do these things, but that's outside the scope of this particular tutorial. So I'm going to save this draft for now. Now it's not going to deploy until we click re review draft and deploy. But you know what, it just popped us right over to the function editor. This is where we're going to write the code that's going to run when someone goes to the webhook URL. Actually, let me go back over here and show you one other thing. This is the URL right here that we are going to be able to access. And then when, when someone goes to this URL and puts in a git request, then it's going to run the code right here, and it's going to return something. So this is the default function in here. It automatically puts an example function, so you kind of 
know in general what the function should look like. And so let's make some changes for our purposes. Um, we are going to have a query because we're going to allow people to query for a year or for a title. And then we're going to have to make a query. We're going to have to develop a query that we can send to the database when if we're going to query for a year or a title. Or also, you can just not put a query at all and it will just return all of the the movies. So I'm going to create an empty query variable and this is just going to be an object here. And then if year, so if there is a year, then we can set the query to equal year and we're going to see if the year equals year. Okay, now else if title and we're going to see if the well if the if the title exists, then we're going to do a query and the query is going to equal we're going to check to see if the title equals the title. Okay, so we created the query based on what arguments are passed into the API endpoint. And now a lot of this stuff we are not going to need here. I'm just going to delete all this. And now we have to query a MongoDB service like it says here. A lot of this stuff can stay the same. We're getting the database from MongoDB Atlas. The database name is called sample inflix. And the collection name is called movies. But we're not going to find one anymore. We're actually going to get more than one and it's going to be based on the query. So let me create another line here and I'll do let movies list equals and then we have we created the doc already so doc dot find query so okay, I have two meets dots there and then we'll do two array Okay, and the final thing we'll have to do now is just return the movies list. So we'll do return the movies list. And now we just have to save this and then review draft and deploy after it finishes saving. This is what it's going to, this is basically the code it's going to run to deploy this. So I'll just click deploy. Now that it's deployed, we can test this on Postman. So first let me get the API endpoint here. So we'll go down here, we'll copy this. This is the API endpoint, it's a git request. So let me go over to Postman. Okay, we're just going to create a request here to test this request. I'm gonna paste in the URL that I just copied. We have a, it's a git request and I'll click send. And it's a good thing we're testing this because it sent back an empty array, which is not what I expected. So that's the great thing about Postman is they can help us figure out if we have it set up right. So let's go back over to MongoDB Atlas. Okay, I'm back in MongoDB Atlas, and it looks like I had the database name wrong. This is supposed to be an underscore, not a dash here. So I'll just put an underscore here, save this, and then deploy that. Click deploy. Okay, let me go back to Postman. And then I'll just click send again. And Postman just verified that it worked. We got the data back. It looks like it's still formatting. I should have probably made it so it only sent back a certain number of records instead of all of the records because there's quite a few records in the database. Maybe I'll do that right now. Okay, we'll do limit and then we'll limit to 15. So it's only going to show 15 records at a time. So let's, uh, I'll just save that and we'll deploy that again and see if that loads a little quicker in Postman. And that one loaded really quick. See, and it was able to format everything exactly how we wanted to format. So this returns basically all the moves in the database limited to the amount that we set. But now let's try to see if we can search by year. It should already have that 
feature. So at the end of this URL, I'll do question mark year equals, how about 1990? Equals, there we go. I'll send that. Uh, let's try another year. Well, let's send it without the year and then just get a year that we know exists in the database. Okay, 1903. So let's search for 1903 here. Okay, it's not working exactly as planned. Let's see what we need to do. I'll try converting this to an int. And then deploy that. Now if I send, now it works. We got all the movies from 1903. So let's try to see if we can find a year in here from 1903. See, he year 1903. Let's try another year. How about, let's try 1990 again. And this does make it easier uh, to be able to put the value in here instead of putting it right in the URL. So that's one good thing about Postman that you can put the values right in here. So I'll send that. And yep, we have all the movies. Let's see if it says 1990. Yep. Okay, now let's see if we can search by title. So let me get just a title from this list we already have here. What's this one called? The writing of Ben Wagner. So let's see if I can just return just that item. So I'll switch this to title and then put the value in here and send that. Okay, it just returned one result, and it is the witching of Ben Wagner. I think I said that wrong before, but yeah, we got the. We can now search by title, and we can search by year. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the movies here and add another web cook, hook, another web hook. This one's just going to be called movie for when I'm just trying to get a single movie instead of multiple movies. It's going to be a get request just like before, and. That's all for this page. Go over to the function editor. Okay, in this function editor, one of the query parameters will be the ID. So we'll do const ID, and that's gonna be the payload.query.id, or if there is no ID, then we'll just set it to an empty string. Okay, we don't need all this stuff here. Okay, so the, con the the document is going to be context.services.get.mongodb.atlas. The DB is sample inflix. The collection is movies. And it's going to be a find one, but we're going to specify what that one is. So we are going to get the one with the ID of ID. Okay, now we're just going to return that document. And let's take this to the next line. And there's one more thing. We actually have to convert this ID. I just remembered. We have to convert this ID to the ID that's used in MongoDB. So it's going to be bson.object ID. And then put that there. Okay, I have to make sure, oh, we, we have system authentication, and because that's um, full privileges. Save the draft. And then deploy. Okay, I will copy the URL here. I'll paste in the URL into Postman. And then I will pass in an ID. I'll get the ID right from this list here. So we'll see if this returns. Like right now it's returning a bunch of movies. Let's see if it just returns the movie with that ID. And that worked. We returned just a single movie with that ID. And that's it for this tutorial. If you want more practice, you can work on creating some more endpoints for this API.